1 through 3. Read with me, church. I waited patiently for the Lord, and He inclined unto me, and He heard my cry. He brought me up also out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and He set my feet upon a rock and established my goings. He put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it in fear and shall trust in the Lord. God, take this message today and pray. Let it be a blessing to us, Lord. Anoint us to hear, anoint us to receive. In Jesus' holy name I pray. The church said, Amen. 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 You may be seated this morning. Turn to your neighbor and say, He brought me out of a pit. He placed me on a solid rock. And he put a new song in my mind. Now smile at them. Make them think you believe that. Amen. Church, I wonder today, and I, I speak to myself today, how long has it been since we called ourselves just singing to the Lord? Uh, just out of gratitude. Uh, just, just be thankful for what we have. You know, we're coming up on the Thanksgiving season and, and next Thursday will be Thanksgiving. And, and uh, how long has it been since we just called ourselves just giving God praise for no reason? Just because He's God. Just because we know uh, we may still have the situation, but yet in our heart we know He's still there. Amen? Uh, don't get confused this morning because I know we sing on Thursday and and we sing on Sunday morning, and we sing on Sunday night. Uh, but what I'm saying here is how long has it been since we called ourselves just singing to the Lord for His goodness to us. Amen. David said, I was at my lowest point in life. Uh, it seemed everything around me had fallen apart, but somehow God showed up. Somehow He put a new song uh, in my mouth. My prayer today, church, is that God will reach down and lift us up. Amen. Establish our faith. Amen. And put a new song in our heart. Amen. Look at verse 1 with me. Verse 1 says, I waited patiently for the Lord. Now, we, we tend to grab a hold of the next two lines in that verse. Uh, and sometimes, many times, uh, we pass over the most important part of that verse. Uh, uh, the psalmist said, I waited patiently. Some of you have been waiting, amen. And some of you have been waiting patiently. But you're going to have to wait on God in God's time for Him to come and do in our lives what needs to be done. Yeah. You know, too many times we think we pray that prayer and at the snap of a finger God is supposed to come like a genie in a bottle and answer our prayer and make everything right. But we all know that's not true. It don't happen like that. Sometimes you just have to wait on the Lord. The psalmist said also those that wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. I don't know about you today, but I need some strength renewed. Amen. I fought some battles and I'm fighting some battles as I'm sure many of you in here are. Amen. But it's most important that we wait upon God. Not move in our own understanding. Not move when we think we ought to move, but wait on the Lord, amen, to come and to do in our lives what needs to be done. The psalmist said, I waited patiently for the Lord, amen, and He inclined unto me, and He heard my cry. I want you to know today that God hears you when you cry out to Him. His ear is not deaf that He cannot hear you, amen. I'm thankful today. I think it was Jesus that said in John 17, Father, I, I thank you that you always hear my prayer. You always hear what I have to say. God is listening today. And He understands situations that we may be facing. Amen. And He inclines His ear. And bless God, He will come in His time. We must be patient and wait upon the Lord. Somebody say amen. 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 Verse 2 says this. Uh, said He brought me up. Now I want you to know God don't bring you down. Amen. 
God's not sitting up in heaven waiting to beat us over the head and to beat us down, Brother Arthur. He said, I come to give you life. I don't know about you, but I need more life. Hello? Am I just preaching to myself today? I need more life, more vigor. I need more faith in knowing that though the situations around me may look like they're just falling apart, I still got a God that's on the throne and He's still with me. And I need that life, that life that God gives that you can have joy even in the midst of a terrible circumstance. Amen. He brought him up, the psalmist said, brought him up uh, also, amen, or brought him up uh, out of a horrible pit. Now I'm going to look at this word pit. Now pit means a time of trouble. Now you say what you will, David's having a hard time here. David, his time of trouble might have been when his family fell apart. It doesn't tell us exactly what is this psalm is over here, but it could have been when his family was falling apart and Absalom, his son, had turned against him. Somebody say it, amen. amen. you got some children that may have turned against you today, then you'd know how David felt. His family tore apart. Absalom goes before the gate and turns the people against his father and puts him on the run. Maybe it was when his son violated his stepsister. He probably didn't know that was in there, but it's there. Amen. It's there. Amen. It might have been when David had an adulterous affair with Bathsheba. This is a pitfall. This is a pit that he finds himself in. Whatever it might have been, David said, this was my pit. It was a time of trouble in my life. A dark moment where it seemed like there was no light that would shine through. Am I talking to anybody here today? Maybe today our pit is a lingering sickness that won't go away. Anything that would cause us trouble or, or heartache or, or despair. This is our pit that we find ourselves in today. It's as if, uh, Brother Stephen, we fell into a hole and we can't seem to get ourselves out. We fell into a darkness where no light can seem to penetrate. It can be many things in our lives today, church. Uh, amen. It could be that, that hurt or that betrayal of a friend or a family member. Do you know what that feels like? David knew what that felt like. He knew what it meant to be hurt. Amen. And not just be hurt by a friend, but to be hurt by a family member. To be hurt by one that you nourished and raised and loved. Amen. I wonder today, amen, maybe you're sitting here and, and you've been that person. You've been hurt or you are hurt right now. I want you to know God's still able to bring light into that dark situation and He can pull you out of the pit that you find yourself in. Maybe our pit today is a pit of stress or pressure from financial uh, stress. Amen? I'm sure in the time that we live, the economy as it is, many of us are, are sort of strapped, so to speak, stressed out about this, stressed out about that. Uh, that could be our pit. That could be a pit. Amen? Anything that causes us to feel like we're helpless or, or feel like we're in a hopeless situation can be our pit. But David said, uh, God came. I called upon God. He inclined His ear unto me and He came and He pulled me out of the pit of despair that I found myself in. It doesn't matter if it's sickness this morning. It doesn't matter if it's family trouble this morning. It doesn't matter if it's financial trouble. David says, listen, you can trust God and if you depend on Him and wait patiently, He will come on the scene and He will pull you out of the pit in which you find yourself in. Amen. Oh, I hope you're getting this Amen. this morning. He brought David out, pulled him out of the, the pit, amen, that he found himself in. Amen. But not only did God pull him out of the pit, the Bible says he also pulled him out of the miry clay. Now, I don't know about you. Have you ever been stuck in the mud? Yes, sir. Huh? There's an old saying, you know, when you bog down, you, you get stuck in the mud. 
You know, I remember when we was younger, and we'd go down here to Armstrong, and, and a lower Armstrong Bridge, and we'd go fishing. And, and as kids, Brother Brian, we, we'd go out there, we didn't care, we'd just trample up and down that river, and, and we'd hunt us a place where we thought we could catch some fish. And I remember one time Brother Joe went down through there, me and a couple more of my friends going down through there, and we seen this little, it was like a little landing, a little cove out there. And I thought, man, that would be the perfect spot. Perfect place to catch some fish. Let's go there. So we hit it out. And as we start out and we get over about halfway to it, we run into some mud, some slime. And I mean, it was waste. It was there. And we were struggling. I tell you, when you get in the mud, when you get in a place where you can't move, we struggled and we struggled and we fought and we tried our best to get out. And I thought, we're going to die right here. There ain't nobody going to find us. They're going to come down here and our bones is going to be laying out here. Amen. But we struggled in that thing and we pulled. And we were young then. We had a little bit of strength then. Amen. But when we come out, we finally made it out. But when we came out, we were so weary. We were so tired and just thankful that we found some solid ground that we could, could lay on, that we could rest on. You know, when you get stuck up in the mud like that, amen, and you find out that you can't move, that's a hopeless situation. Sister Martha, that's a helpless situation. Sometimes we find ourselves in. Amen. And next thing you know, you're struggling. And you're doing your best. You're fighting, doing everything that you know to do. But the psalmist said, bless God, He came and He pulled me out. Uh, you need somebody that can help get you out in a time of need. Uh, amen. I remember not too long back, uh, maybe a year or so ago, uh, I came home from work. I pulled in from my, uh, into my driveway there. And my neighbor across the street, he's about 70 or 70 so years old, big man. I mean, he was a, he's a hefty man. Amen. And, and uh, I couldn't pull him up. You know what I'm talking about. But I came in and his wife, his little old wife, she was just a, a frail little thing. And she was on the front porch preaching key. <laughs> come here, come here, I need you. And I said, what in the world's going on? And we get over there, bless his heart, he got out there in the garden. And it was after a good rain. And he went in and tried to get something that had blown into the garden and he was stuck. I mean, he sunk, slapped down, and he was laying there. He come out, he was watered in mud. It was everywhere. Church, amen, he couldn't get himself out. And he had this scare. Oh, you should have seen her, but he had this scared look on his face and he was yeah. so relieved, so relieved when he seen somebody walk up and yeah. say, man, somebody's going to help me. Somebody's going to get me out of this situation that I've got myself. I want you to know today, church, that God stands ready yeah. to get you out of the situation Amen. that you may find yourself in. You may feel like today that you're stuck in a place and you're not going nowhere. That's exactly what the enemy wants you to think. The enemy wants you to think that nobody in this church cares about you. The enemy wants you to think that you ain't got a friend in this world. He wants you to think that nobody's going to come to your rescue and help you out. And God says, I will come. Amen. And I may not come in the form of the spirit of a dove. Amen. But I'll send somebody. Amen. I'll send somebody that'll help you in your time of need that'll pull you out of the situation that you find yourself in. The psalmist said, not only did he pull me out of the pit that I found myself in, but when I was stuck, when I was in a hopeless situation, when I had nowhere else to turn and didn't know what I was going to do, he said, my God came and he delivered me. He pulled me out of the body grave and he set my foot up on a solid rock. And there's nothing like coming and knowing that you've been stuck uh -huh. and be able to put your feet on solid ground and be able to know I can walk again. I don't have to struggle to walk no more. I can walk now because God had placed me on solid ground. Amen. The psalmist said he brought me out and he placed my feet upon a solid rock. Amen. Amen. The rock of Jesus Christ. 
Amen. That foundation that will not shake. That foundation that will not be torn down. That's the foundation.